So welcome one and all. I am Praveen Shekhar, the co-chair of the Creativity Seek. The other co-chair is the gentleman that you are going to listen to today, Harish Kumar. Now, before I introduce Harish, I will need to let you know how I met Harish Kumar or how Tai Chennai met Harish Kumar. It was 2012. We had the Thai conference happening and every year for TaiCon, there is an awards uh, show that happens. And that particular year, the videographer or the person who had to put all the intro, outro for the winners, his system crashed one day before the event. And we were all uh, completely tensed until somebody said, hey, I know a guy. Why don't you go to his office in Tinagar and he will sort it out. We had no idea who Harish Kumar was and his company Hypnotics, the previous venture. We landed up in his office that afternoon. He gave his entire office, his entire staff. We worked through the night, slept in his office, and um, his team gave us the CDs with which we ran to the Chennai Trade Center in time for the awards show. That was Tai Chennai's first interaction with Harish Kumar. And uh, both Tai Chennai, myself, and uh, Harish have come a long way since then. Harish is an extremely creative person. You look at videography, photography, professional speaking, art. And I would need to tell you that one of the Thai retreats that we had in Yerkard, a lot of our members collaborated, came up with art, which was directed, trained and choreographed by Harish and his team. And those paintings done by Thai members were then auctioned off at a Thai charter member retreat and we raised 1.25 lakhs. So Harish Kumar is also a professional speaker. If any of you are looking at charging up your office, having a creativity workshop, he is the guy to go to. As an entrepreneur, he has hypnotics and out the box, a Singapore based company. He enables his audience, which is you and I, to tap our creative potential and create experiences on stage. This is our virtual stage. And that is Harish Kumar for you. By looks, action, it is always lights, camera, action for him. And he is here to talk to us about what we need to do. And before I hand it over, you are seeing my setup, which was again directed by Harish Kumar. I've got two screens, one camera, two lights, one microphone, everything set up to make sure that I am presentable, audible, and I make an impact. And he is here to spend the next hour with you and I to teach how to get it done so that we make an impact in this digital virtual world that we are living in. Keep your questions towards the end. He will go ahead and uh, take his session. Keep the chat flowing. Keep your videos on if it helps because that is how you charge all of us. So Harish, over to you, lights, camera and action. Thank you. Thank you, Praveen. Uh, thanks for that wonderful introduction. And I think it was also a kind of a travel back in time that you took us <laughs> from the time we started working and been a pleasureful journey. Uh, so today being uh, probably in moderating the show, I had to get this library on. So I had to quickly work around and quickly fix this library. So I said I'm relevant to Praveen and his books. So since we came into this library, I got into this little thought. Do I really look like I've read all these books? No, I'm a more of a visual guy. I love more of the comic books. So I thought I'll pull out one of my comic books and then take you on a journey through that comic book. I'm sure you will not be disappointed with the comic book because comic books are all what we are always entertained and enjoy our childhood and even today. So while the comic book comes into place, yes, the comic book has come and it's loading for a few seconds. Why a comic book? Because we are all in this visual journey and for us, it is more and more important today that we get the right visuals in place. So this comic book is about what, how, who, what is all this about? So I'm going to take you through this journey of this story of 3V. Any guesses 
can we have some guesses in the chat window as to what this 3V could stand about? We were talking about lights, camera and action and what is this 3V that's come out? Victory. Victory. Visuals. Hmm, I'm liking that. I think there's a lot of influence of Winston Churchill's victory there. Yes, visual. So I'm going to tell you a story of the 3V. You know the 3V story? Has anybody heard of the 3V story here? No, I'm confident that none of you would have made it because I just made this story up today. What is the story of the 3V? Especially for you. So the first V of the story, before you actually get down to making the videos, I'm going to put on a little more serious hat here. And I'm going to ask you, you're making a video, you're presenting yourself in front of the camera. The first thing is we need to believe that we're all kind of a storyteller. We might be presenting facts or anything that we'll be doing. But then end of the day, we're kind of telling a story. So find out what is your story, what is your message, and what is the flow of the story that you're going to present? And what is the objective at the end of the day? Why are you making this video? Or why are you presenting yourself in front of the camera? Of course, there is a business need, there is a communication need that you want to cater to. But beyond that, start putting a little thing, hey, you know what, today I'm going to tell you something about this. Build that very clearly and craftfully because it's very, very important that people don't relate to you. They relate to your story, what your story is and what is that you're going to present to the world. So it's very, very critical that you understand this very early, even before you get down to understanding the tech part of all of this. And once you've done this homework on your story, the next important thing that you need to very, very clearly understand is who are you making this for? Who's your audience? Is it the executive on the other side? Is it that your client? Or are you making a video out to present it and reach it out to the world? And if you might be wondering the questions that I've asked here, who's he? How does he look? What does he look? Am I like, hey, these sound a little absurd and ridiculous because how am I going to even know what the, that guy looks on the other end when I'm making a video and how is this? No, why I'm asking this question is you need to have a very clear picture or you draw an imaginary picture of this guy and start talking there. Right now I'm talking to the camera, but what I'm trying to do is I'm talking to one on one with all of you there through your window in that inside your house or office. So it's very, very important that you have a very clear understanding of your audience, their age or whatever they look like. And once you've got that, you try and understand a very another critical aspect of the V3, which is the consumption. How does he look at this video? You know, today with this whole Zoom fatigue, you know, somebody's like lying down, somebody's like, uh, like most of us are getting too much of this visual fatigue that we don't want to get our cameras on. We don't want to, hey, you know what, I'm just lying in my house. I don't know what uh, consume. The same thing is happening for your consumer too. So you think that way when you're a consumer, the same way when you are presenting, the guy on the other end is also thinking in the same way. He's probably lying down or he's seen your content for a little while, then he's gone somewhere. Or there is a bit of that little disconnected viewing. You know, it's not that uh, 70s, 80s Doordarshan viewing, you know, the TV is on and everybody came and sat in front and they're watching that. No, we're doing multiple things. We're seeing a phone, we're listening to something, and then we've also put this video on or we sidely, uh, we kind of typing down some document on the side. And that's exactly what your audience is also doing. Get these three very, very, very clear because it forms the premise before you even start the camera on. So I want everybody to understand these V3. So I'm saying, okay, V3 is done. So what else? So then it brings down the very important question. Where is he watching? Is he watching it on a phone? So if it's a phone, it's probably, is he looking linear or is he going horizontal on a desktop? So your content is also going to be very 
very critical in terms of thinking hey should i make it vertical should i make it horizontal have some basic thumb rules of understanding say if you can kind of doing a slightly longer form content where the audience engagement is needed for a slightly longer duration probably a horizontal would make sense but you'll want if you're wanting to do a quick shot like a reel or you want to make a quick youtube shot go for something really short and then go for something vertical because the person today is even feeling lazy to turn the phone around like this get that you don't want to take that effort to turn it around so that much of consideration is very very important when you start making your content and once you've done this we come to the v4 i strategically didn't write that why because once you've understand the who why and how let's get to the what do you understand the sequence of roll sound lights camera action have all of you heard this can i hear it in the chat window why is that this in this order roll sound lights camera and action any guesses from the audience sound is the most important mm hmm any other guesses sequence of film shooting yes that's also from where it came down the lights have to be first put on clearly yes i was expecting some different answers good film that rolls first do we really have a film today right we don't have a film so what are we rolling to set the background for the perfect shot yes good you guys have got started thinking but yes this theory of roll sound lights camera action actually originated from the prehistoric days of actual film shooting because what ha used to happen is even though you had to get the lights camera all of that set the sound used to take the tape used to take a few seconds before it starts winding and picked up speed so always they will say roll sound so that the sound guy actually starts rolling well in advance and the rolling is happening and then the lights are put on then the camera goes on and action now you must be wondering harish why are you bringing this age old story and why is it relevant today there is a sense of relevance you know why why is this relevant it is relevant because it really matters about everything that you do i'll show you a simple example but before i get into the example i'm asking everyone to know this very very clearly if somebody sounds very clear people believe that person more today and if your audio is not right people tend to kind of believe the what you the message that you said is probably there or probably not correct or not just okay so it's very very important today that you get your sound very very clear the trust for what you say is built on the sound clarity that you have so when we talk about sound there is a few technical things that you need to know one is of course you're doing a traditional mic if you have a traditional mic then what you need is something called as an audio interface so what's an audio interface an audio interface is something that looks like this you know you can use a traditional mixer like those 8 channel 16 channel the big ones like the music directors use or you use something like a scarlett 2i2 or a 4i2 or a 8i2 or something like a apogee you know which is just a plug and play device this is something that you will need as an audio interface if you want to get a good mic and you connect it to your system and then if you have that mic 
how are you going to keep it you need a good cable and a good stand to support it and now to the big big mess out there what mic do i buy and which one should i pick it up i've heard all these kinds of words the dynamic the condenser the lavalier the usb type mic i just don't know what i want to pick up right i'm sure this is a question if you've really thought a little more into your audio you would have had these questions in mic but just remember these abc fact a condenser mic is the one which really picks up the sharpest of the sound which is what you generally would find in a good recording studio where they're recording a song or a voice over so that you pick up the best and the sharpest of the sound around a dynamic mic is something like what i'm using it is more which is more carotid which is means it picks up sound from the front of the mic and not so much from the surrounding area like the mic that is seen here that's a more of a dynamic mic and this is more of a condenser mic and then of course the popular lapel mics which you put it on the collar and get it recorded now if you say harish all this that you're saying is too tech and just flying over my head just pick up a good usb mic today the technology is really gone ahead like the blue yeti or a rode nt or something all you have to do is take the mic take the usb into your computer and there you go you are pretty set with your mic so don't rely on just your laptop audio or the laptop mic because they perform a very very basic function if you want to sound really good ensure you have at least a basic usb mic and that's stuck to the computer it's very important and then comes how are you going to hear this out one is propagating and second how you're hearing it's very important because right from the mic and the way it sounds all the things changes like see i'm talking right now at a slightly particular distance it's probably not the best distance from the mic I'll just show you how a simple distance can make a big difference in the way I sound. Now just watch this. Hi everyone in the room from Thai. Hope you're listening to the audio quality here and I'm sure you will find a significant difference in the way I'm delivering. What do you think? Do you agree? Can I show off can I see a show of hands on the chat window? Do you agree or not? it makes a significant difference isn't it it's because of the placement of the mic and how it is placed and how i'm sounding to you you will immediately find that okay this person is talking to me very clearly and he's sounding better and same way how am i going to listen to this i need to have a good pair of headphones a simple it's not those tiny little ear plugs you know most of the basic ear plugs don't throw you probably it's better off you get a good listening stuff like a basic professional one like a sennheiser one these cost you just about a thousand odd bucks but they sound very good or you get a good if you want to buy invest in a slightly expensive one then get that especially to hear your own audio and voice and if you want to set up like a little setup at home and then go ahead and invest in some studio monitors the lots of brands you know uh, studio monitors from yamaha you know genlac and lots of brands are there but then these are a fair amount of investment you're talking about 25 30 grand onwards for a good set of monitors though you get cheaper ones in the market but the good branded ones are the ones to go for and once you've done these things you need to start questioning and say okay what am i still not sounding yes you need to start doing a bit of an acoustic treatment when i'm talking acoustic treatment you might have thinking you know i do i really put up a huge setup studio kind of a stuff no you don't really need to do because at home you can do a whole lot of stuff 
of course even at home you can buy some of these smart looking acoustic panels they actually dampen the noise and the echo because most of the rooms have a some amount of echo and reverb and that can get fixed now you'll uh, ask me this question harish how do i find this there is a reverb in which corner for this what i call is the clap 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 technique which is like you do this and you start walking around your room find the corner where you get that reverb more and find the space where you get that reverb less maybe that place has got better dampening and probably it is a better sounding area for you to place your computer or your laptop and then what you can do is the classic audio treatment which is the old bed sheet jamakalam or what you called is your gaddi all that are the best best acoustic materials that you have at home you know you can put them like a little curtain or like in the picture that you might see it somebody was like laid it out very smartly those curtains like if you can drop these curtains around the space where you're talking it will make your audio sound very very good and if you want to invest a little more you can buy this little micro microphone shields you know which you just keep it around your mic it just cuts off all the noise around and makes it sound like a studio these are simple stuff that you can do but most of all that you can do at home is the blanket or if you have a little shelf at home and a lot of wooden pieces lot of curtains draw a lot of curtains and stuff like that that those are the best noise cancellation that you'll find at home and once you've done this so you've done the basic aspect of fixing the sound and convincing the next part comes i need to look bright and clear you know i don't want that ghost thing happening which you see on zoom when i move suddenly part of my head moves out see i'm moving but i'm not getting cut correct there are a few factors which are helping me to ensure that it comes so remember when it comes to light it's just not about buying all the fancy light it's about how you place the light and that lighting matters it's very very important to remember this it's not about buying fancy lights a bulb at home can also do wonder so which is the best source of light all of you have can i see in the chat window for my knowledge what are the kind of lights that you guys have i'm sure today all of you are doing zoom so you must have picked up few lights yes the classic ring light table lamp tube light the light not me <laughs> led lights candle wow i'm impressed with that somebody is actually trying the candle i'm going to have a talk with christy at the end of this conversation how is he managing stuff with the candle ring lights and tube lights seem to be but haven't you thought of using the most powerful light source that all of us have what's that a missing one light yes the sunlight it's the best form of light that you all have and which costs you zero nothing and what you do is the sunlight is the best form that you can actually make use of but then there are some simple tricks that you can do the sun is really harsh when it hits it makes you bleach so you don't know how to control one thing that you can do is when the sunlight is coming just drop a thin white dupatta or a white dhoti on that curtain and that will give you an amazing white light falling on your face so ideally the light is somewhere here and falling onto you it can do wonders for you so now let's look at how can we place this lighting in terms of the setup you need to understand this basic setup if you can understand what are the lights you know i am not telling you to buy three different lights at this point of time you know you don't have to invest like a studio but then you need to be aware that do i what which is my key light which is my fill light and do i really need a hair light yes amazing if i can if not also it's fine but at least 
you know, have a good key light, which is the strongest source of light, you know, have that ideally placed at about 45 degree angle. So I'm sitting here, my light, my key light is a ring light here, which is at about 45 degree and at a slightly elevated angle and tilting onto me so that it gives me a, so you can see this when I move my hand, you can see that shadow falling on my face, but you see that it's a little soft and nice one. It's not a very harsh looking thing. At the same time, you see this side, I still get a light which is here. So I have a fill table lamp, which is doing the job of a fill light. And I do have another highlight at behind, which I've not put on right now because I felt this was good enough and I can take it. And why I'm saying this, and I'm, I do have my studio lights, but I'm not using any of the studio lights. And I want to make it all of you to believe that you can actually do wonderful lights with just the lights at home. And I'm going to hit down to the chat windows a little later. I know you're asking what happens when it's late in the night. Of course, you have to rely on the bulbs, the tube lights and the normal bulbs and the table lamps and the ring lights. But then it's about this placement. Get this placement very clearly. It's just not straight like this. Never place this light because it gives you that very hard patchy light. A lot of people buy that lamp and they just place it here. Don't do that. Take it a little off center. Take it about a 45 degree and tilt it up. You will start seeing wonders happening there. And then have a little fill light, which is not too strong as this, slightly away or slightly somewhere on that side. So those two can do wonders for you. And once you've understood this, then get down to buying some lights that you want. Of course, the ring light is by far very popular today. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm getting distracted from that little chat. Uh, Praveen is using a lot of the moonlight. I'm going to get down onto the chat, post the talk. I want to wonder how Praveen is using his moonlight uh, to light his face up. Uh, of course, the ring light works. And then try and pick up a softy box. The softy box is nothing but like an LED light, but then it has that little soft cover around it, which makes it diffused and soft. Or like I told you the earlier trick, a bulb, with a dupatta or a dhoti or a vesti can also do the same trick at home. And of course, then you're investing a little more, you can buy these LED lights, which has control of making it warm, cold, temperature, intensity. And if you're a traveler and you want to travel and also consume content, you get these smart lights, which are like the loom cubes, which are this small, we can put it in the pocket, take it wherever you go and light it up. Or if you're using a webcam or something, just place it on top and it just gives you a beautiful fill. So you can, but then these lights cost you a bit, whereas the bulbs and the others cost you nothing. It's just about application there. And once you've done this, invest in a nice backdrop. I've seen so many people compromising on this big time. They put the sari behind, they put a too much of cluttered, flowery curtains. I'm okay, you love flowers, but then those can be too much of a distraction. Either you can buy regular a backdrop like this, which you can find it on Amazon or something like that. Just drop it if you're not a great fan of green screen. You can buy one of those textured backgrounds, just drop it. It will give you an amazing feel to the visual. Or you buy a piece of green mat. Today, a green mat cloth costs you just about 700 to 1000 rupees. Don't buy those Lycra ones that you find on Amazon. The transparent, shiny one. They are not a great one. You need to buy the cotton ones. They are very good and it just costs you about anywhere between 500 to 1000 rupees based on the size that you want to fit for the room. But then I would really urge you to do this. One of the reasons you don't see any of these artifacts behind my hand, fingers or my face is I have a green screen. And this green screen is lit. And that's where you find this very clear key in Zoom. And one of the reasons I generally use lots of third party softwares for my presentation. But for today's presentation, I'm only using a Zoom and nothing else. So you see in a Zoom, you can get this very clear possibility. And Zoom is amazing today. And once you've done these basic fixes, 
let's get to the big topic. Uh, lots of people ask me this, Hari, what kind of camera do I buy? Do I need to buy a DSLR? Do I need to buy this webcam? Or can I do with just a laptop camera? Yes, all of these can do wonders. Like, you can of course invest in a DSLR or you can use any of the sports camera like a GoPro or an Insta or of course the best camera that you have. Most of us have a mobile phone or a laptop camera with you. All of that can do wonders. But then you need to understand one thing here. The camera just shoots what it is fed or whatever light it is being fed. Right now, the camera of mine is giving you a very, very sharp image of mine. Why? Because the lights are not falling on the lens of the camera, but the lights are falling on me and the background behind, illuminating in the way that you get the sharpest pictures. Most of us do this big mistake when you're using the camera. You keep this laptop camera on, or say a mobile camera, you see this kind of a reflection that you see, and that's what exactly is happening on your laptop camera. There is too much of unwanted light falling on the lens of that camera and it's getting confused. And it's not able to give you a sharper image. Most recent laptops give you a pretty decent image. But for that, you need to ensure the light is falling on you and not on the camera lens. See, a lot of people, they'll keep one light here or there'll be a window light which is just hitting the camera here like this. And that makes it not a good experience. Really, it's not a very good experience seeing too much of artifacts. You will see that suddenly you go bright, suddenly you go dark, suddenly the color changes. It's all because your camera is constantly getting confused as to what is the lighting. Give it a very stable light and it will start performing better. Of course, the higher cameras have better adaptability to these changes, whereas the lower cameras are not ready to do that. So don't get enamored by the kind of camera that you need to have or invest too much. But what you need to do is ensure the camera is placed right and it is focused without any distraction. And then comes a very important aspect is the stabilizer part of it. How am I placing this camera? Either you use a small little, right, right now I have a small little tripod on the table of mine. So it comes and it is at eye level. It's very important that I maintain this eye level for the camera. Most people, if you're on Zoom that you would see, that you will see that the person is like this, or he's here, or he's somewhere here, or he's somewhere there, and he's getting, or it is like too close like this, with half the face getting cut. Get your placement sorted. See, when you start your camera, is this first, the camera is placed stable. If nothing, use a cup, use a bunch of books, put that, keep it steady. No doing this hand shaking thing, even if you're using a phone, keep it steady. Or if you're outside, you know, you can use a bunch of paper cup or a paper binder clip, put them on, it remains steady. And once you've done that, get to ensure and balance you are at a good eye level for the camera. And this happens a lot with the laptop users. They keep the laptop very down and the laptop camera is just looking up. It's like that whole ghosty, you know, in the movies you have that shot of the villain looking from the top and you are down there. It is a very not business friendly angle at all. If you're doing business, if you're talking to a client, please maintain this parallel eye level. It's very, very important you do that. And once you've done this, the rest of it is called action. So you must be wondering, Harish, what's action all about? It's all the things that's important for you. I'm going to throw a sequence of steps that is very, very, very critical for you. Because these are all the steps that matters when you're right in front of the camera. Right clothing and colors. 
Like right now, I have a fairly contrast color from my background. I could have been in black, I could have been in white, but had I been on white or a very light shade with a light background of mine, then I'm calling for some distraction. So I need to have a fair understanding of what my slides look on or what my zoom window or my house background is and what kind of colored clothing I'm wearing. And second posture. Right now, I'm sitting, I, I'm not sitting on my chair, but I'm sitting, I'm not standing. One, if you prefer the standing part of it, you can do the standing part of it. Or if not, if you're doing the sit, use a, some kind of a stool or kind of, which has not got too much of this backrest because what generally happens with the backrest, you tend to lean a lot like this. How many Zoom calls have you seen people sitting like this and looking, yeah, I had that idea. Do you think this gives a very friendly atmosphere? No, not at all. This is like that in the movie scene, you know, the guy's like, Kitne paise? It's like a very gabbersing kind of a look. It is not nice. So be, get your right posture, you know, sit firm, you know, and probably have some space to rest your arm. Because once you rest your arm, then you're not slouching back like this. But the arm gives you that little support from the table and ensures your posture is fairly straight. And of course, your body language, you know, use gestures, use communication. People then connect to what you're saying. Right or wrong? It's very important that you use a bit of a gestures and not like just like uptight passport size photo or an Aadhaar photo kind of a thing. It's not exciting. Use that. And use, of course, people are only picking cues of your body language more than the sound. It's about your eyes to speak, your voice to speak. Like I said earlier, you know, you don't have to come and do this. You know, Hart, today I'm talking to you guys in the meeting. No, you don't have to do that very voiceoverish tone. But then you can sound nice. Now, what I'm talking, this is my natural voice. Can I reproduce my natural voice and sound that so that I sound authentic to you? And then, of course, your tonality. Lots of people, what they do is they end up screaming. You know, they say, like, how you say it right now, what I'm trying to say. So you try to put a lot of force in your communication and then you end up screaming. You don't have to do that. Most of your devices can pick very good sound today. So ensure a trick for that is record your sound, play it back. Record your sound, play it back, and then you know which, at what distance you sound good. The first few times you're gonna hate your sound, but then adjust that and then correct to the level at what you should be speaking, the speed at which you should be speaking. You don't have to rush, you don't have to be super slow, but then get the right tone and speed. And then of course, look at the camera lens. Today, your camera, like if I, I'm saying, I'm giving this example of the phone here, you know, the camera is not this space. The camera is this little dot. And what happens is when we are presenting on a screen like this or onto the phone, we tend to start looking at the screen. Like right now, I need to be looking at this camera lens for me to look at you and not look at my monitor here or here. And then if I'm looking here and talking, it looks like I'm talking to somebody else and not to you. Nine out of 10 people do that mistake. They don't look at that camera. And a simple trick that I can tell you is if you're using a laptop or a mobile phone, take the bindi or a red marker and just put it next to it. So your eyes get by default focused towards that and you start focusing on that red dot and you know where you're looking. Or if you think the screen is a distraction, I would even urge you to say, close the screen and talk. That way you will not get distracted and you'll be super focused. And then, of course, have some water next to you. If you're feeling choked or you're looking a little dry on your throat, like I have a bit of warm lemon tea with me, so I can always take a sip. Yeah, I actually needed that. So you would see, my sound is also getting better and you'll see the throat is eased out. 
it's very important that you do this before a talk because it eases out your throat it helps you to sound better and of course the last couple of points you know the right mindset you know be focused get into the mode a few minutes before you're getting into the talk or the conversation so that you are in that mindset you're locked in you're checking there and then the classic do a few rounds of breathing you know it helps you to sound better it helps you to sound more calm and that's the trick and the basic essentials that you need to do for your lights camera and get the best of the action and i'm right now open to q and a over to you pravin can we ask the questions like this or do we have to type it in we can no no you can go right and let's go free flowing right now okay i'm going to ask you a question please pravin thank you Um, can uh, i how please are you ask this? Me? how are you doing this how's the slide moving behind you please tell us oh yes uh right now the simple trick right now see right now it's changed i've come back to my library you know what zoom allows you to do is in the zoom you have if you updated your zoom the latest version of your zoom allows you with a feature called advanced in the advanced share it allows you to take your powerpoint itself as a background and it automatically keys you into the powerpoint that's available for mac also i'm sorry yes. i'm really yes, challenged yes. it works <laughs> on the mac and the pc only thing you need to uh, check whether the processor is latest or is powerful enough and there is sufficient ram because that feature sometimes does not work on certain low end if the ram is less or if the pc is low which the zoom will prompt out and tell you in case the, once you update your zoom and when you go and try it if, if the processor is not sufficient like on a pc i can tell you at least an i5 and above the feature works processors below i5 that uh, that feature doesn't work and on a mac i think you will need to have the latest uh, os line uh, version so that it supports those features so that apart ensure there is sufficient ram in this and it works amazingly okay lovely thank you very much next up is uh, shankar followed by jawahar for the questions so shankar over to you shankar you're muted you had to say that harish that yeah <laughs> <laughs> wonderful session harish gratitude from my side okay thank you. i wanted to understand uh, that the background that you have chosen how does one dynamically change it uh, is there a way one can set up a set of uh, libraries from which you can use it how does one do that if you could help us with that oh very simple right now what i shared was just a powerpoint uh, okay okay but, it's but just a powerpoint with a sequence of images and text okay Harish, as a viewer, how can we? Um, how can yes. we? Th that's the immersive feature of Zoom. Okay. So basically, if you have a green mat, Zoom mm -hmm. automatically keys. Right now, see if I, I, all I have is a green mat behind. Like okay. I can show you. Um, see right now, if I go and put my background off, you see that this is this is my setup right now. Okay. It's as simple as that. So once I put this off or like i want to blur my background and right it's like those typical ones like you the common ones never use these backgrounds these are so done to death on zoom that everybody uses these kinds of backgrounds please 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 avoid this because it's so much boring so i i use a simple stuff something like this it's just another jpeg but then it is done in such a way that there's a bit of a touch up done so that it gives me a little studio like feel here Okay. So it gives me sharper and clearer image. Great, um, Harish. As a viewer, um, uh, what kind of a camera would you recommend? Because as a presenter, it was great that you shared. But as viewers, because we take part in meetings and also, what kind of camera can we use? I would appreciate okay. your thoughts. Yes. See, the best in the deal is of course having like right now. My feed that you're seeing is coming from a DSLR. so you will find that the dslr by far gives you the sharpest uh, imagery it also does uh, auto focusing uh, right now see i'm coming closer here 
the camera is automatically focusing on me. Okay. And this, this is amazing because if you see this, I'm going to move really behind and I'm going to stand here and talk to you. You'll see that I'm standing here and talking to you. It's still focusing on me. I didn't touch the camera. I didn't need a support of anyone doing that, but the camera is doing it. So these kind of stuff, in case you want to move around and do stuff with an autofocus on a DSLR, you can do that. But then okay. if you say like, okay, this is not so much get invest in a good webcam. All right. The next best stuff that you can do is invest in a good webcam. And even if you're not doing that, ensure the laptop camera that you're using is good enough. It's placed like you 90% of the time, if the laptop is kept down and you're doing a meeting, it's a strict no, no lift your laptop up so that the camera is up there. You know, you need to get it to point to your face. So you will have to lift your laptop up. You get a lot of smart desktop razor kind of a stuff for the laptop. Pick those, you know, so that the laptop is up and you look straight onto the person. I, I would really suggest the, doing that and cut out all the glass for on the laptop camera. See, like, like <laughs> for example, right now I see in your room, I would say there is light is little less. There's probably one light source, maybe a tube light, which is onto the left side of you on the top. And that is casting a shadow. So the light is not sufficient enough to light up your face right now. Okay. And that's where you find the background onto your right side. There is very little light falling. So it tends to start looking grainy. Okay. So those are the fixes that you can do. You know, you can even pick up two bulbs and fix it and you're good to go. Thank you, Harish. Thank you. Thank you, Shankar. Lovely. Before I give it to Jawahar, there is one. Uh, Harish, could you change it back to that JPEG brownish single image that you had? Yeah, I'll do that. So apart from your videography and uh, photography, do you also take marriage proposal photos? <laughs> 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 okay, I didn't expect that coming from... <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now you've given me a new business scope. Okay. I'll start considering that. <laughs> COVID times sir. all business is good business. <laughs> a question from Arun is my background, uh, greasy. No, it's my personal library. It's real. It's not. Fake. Uh, over to you Jawahar for your question. Well, you Jawahar, you'll have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Can you hear me Harish? Yes. yes. Loud. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Harish. Yeah, very nice session, Harish. You know, it was uh, all the things that you told me are very new to me. So I plan on implementing at least some of them. So as a newbie, right, uh, you know, it's uh, quite expensive to implement all the things that you said in the meeting. So at least uh, tell us like, what is the bare minimum essentials, you know, as a newbie to start with, you know, what is the priority? Is it the mic or this is the lights or is it the now, what, what is the priority in which we need to go on, like, you know, buying stuff for our studio? Right, right. Um, I would presume you have either a good smartphone or a laptop, correct? Yes, yes. Yes. So having considered, like, probably that should be the last investment that you should look at. The first is you need to have a basic, decent mic, yeah, at least one lapel mic. You can buy for as cheap as 900 to 1000 bucks, you get wired lapel mics, which can be connected to your laptop or a system. So that's like the cheapest one. But if you're spending four or 5,000 rupees onwards, anywhere between four to six, 7,000 rupees, you have an amazing range of mics that you can pick up. Okay. Because I keep telling people time and again, your label, label mics. Yeah, you get lapel mics, you also get desktop mics, you know, the mics that you can actually place okay. it on your table, like how podcasters and all that use, you okay. get those kinds of mics also. Okay. Tons of them on Amazon. Due to COVID, they've all jacked up the price a little bit more because of the demand there, but it will come down or you can actually check it out in the market, you will get it at a better price than sometimes online also. And then, of course, the basic one light that you can invest on is about a ring light, which costs you about 1,500, 2,000 rupees. Or you can buy a softy that's about 1,000 rupees odd, which is nothing but basically one box LED light and it has that one soft diffuser cloth on it. Just this one lapel mic and one light will just start making your visual to look. I'm telling you like right now, I can give you like, see your background is bright. Your angle is low. 
you know uh, the light is not and you the light is somewhere on top in the ceiling or somewhere it's casting a shadow under your eyes so it becomes like that ghost uh, what do you say that in the cartoons when you get punched eyes you know the yeah. so it, it it does not give you that right imagery what you want to portray that's not you it's giving a wrong impression of you in front of the camera so ensure the light is here here and one basic sounding i think that itself will i would say in terms of an investment under 4 5000 rupees you're very good to go okay and thank you harish and one more question it's kind of a uh, quite a personal question too but uh, you know i i'm a violinist and i plan on starting an orchestra uh mm. so you know i want to build a studio inside my house so are you available as a consultant to build a studio inside my house yes i do uh projects in terms of building studios i develop auditoriums and experience centers so even for houses we build that up okay okay and is it possible you can share your number harish with uh, yes i'll drop it out in the chat window okay thanks a lot harish very nice thanks, thanks, thanks. Sir. answer your question jawahar this setup was uh, that i have was guided by harish and i've got a recording studio in my office wow. that was also based on uh, harish's recommendation okay. now uh, moving over to uh, christy henita do you remember christy harish now she's got she's the one with uh, the candle light <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> <laughs> because that's like you? personally it just Out of all the chat windows, one just popped out out of me. It's like candle. How is somebody doing that with the candle? I would want to know that. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you, Harish and uh, Pravin, for the wonderful sessions going on. Actually, there was a competition. Speaker of the zone. I belong to one organization, Junior Chamber International (JCI), and they conducted zone speaker of the zone competition. And I was one of the contestant, and the power went by. because of the storm which happened in chennai last year so at that time i actually used a candle to light up my face and uh, then i performed and uh, i got third prize also so i can't forget that incident wow 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 that's nice that's how indians are you know we are the masters of jugaad you know we don't worry about what it is but i'll tell you a better trick for something like that use a torch light am i audible yes christy uh I would suggest next time you run into a problem like this, keep a couple of torch lights handy, and on the top of the torch light put a small tracing paper or a butter paper. That will actually give you a very close to a studio light kind of a feel, and probably Good. more safer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I thought Harish, you will say keep one candle at forty-five degree angle and keep under. <laughs> Sorry, I got disconnected. Become like a dream date sequence, you know, where there are lots of candles lit around and you're talking. <laughs> uh, Harish, I want to speech. ask one. Harish, I want to ask one. Sorry, I got disconnected. Uh, one no, no. question, Harish. Uh, when we present videos from our side, net connection can be uh, good, and we think that the video is running smoothly. But on the other side, uh, they were not receiving it in a proper manner. So, is there any way how we can compress uh, video and uh, we can show the people? See, as such, if you ask me, the data that is going out of Zoom and other things are by default compressed. Okay. But what is happening is beyond this compression, you are going to be asking for more loss of quality. It is not going to be too great. Yes, bandwidth on the other side does matter. If somebody has got a low bandwidth, his reception and visual quality is going to be impaired. That is something we will not be in a position. But at least when we are streaming, like for example, right now I'm on a wired connection and not on a Wi-Fi. Though I have a Wi-Fi, I ensured it is the LAN cable that is connected to my system so that it's more stable and consistent. Though that fluctuation also happens, but it's not fluctuating as much as the Wi-Fi because the Wi-Fi keeps fluctuating too much. So that's why you see so many times when people are saying suddenly their audio will get muffled or the visual will start getting blurry and then sharpen out. Ensure try and avoid the especially when you're doing a talk or a session. Try and take the LAN port from your uh, Wi-Fi that thing and then connect it to your laptop and do it. Or buy a long cable. Yeah, it just costs you about a hundred rupees to buy a long ten meter, fifteen meter LAN cable. So from your modem you can just connect it to your laptop. Okay. Th that will ensure it's good quality. And. Uh solution i found is uh, i am streaming nowadays only low uh, uh, low uh, memory size videos only 
so that it is streaming properly i am not using heavy videos I'm occupying more memory space that is one work around i have found i would say uh, don't compromise on the uh, compression quality because uh, there is a bare minimum i would say in today's world we need to talk at least the bare minimum hd because on the other side of the world people are all talking 4k 6k and 8k of how to stream out that content so i think the bare minimum starting point today is hd which is 1920 by 1080 okay once really? 5g comes i think uh, we will sort out all these issues you know but i think you, your what you get today i tell you most of the operators most of the things are pretty good your phone does a pretty decent hd stream Okay. And you just a, even a geo connection should help you to do that. Good. Thank uh, you. Thank on. you, Harish. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, there's a question from Sri Ganesh Raman. A question on light: Should we switch off other lights if we use a ring light? Not necessary, because uh, your other light can act as your fill light. Like I said, you need to also have a fill light. Ensure that the tube light is not. in such a bad condition that say for example i'm sitting here i have other lights in the room but i don't have it on right now because i have a sufficient fill light also if not i can use the light of the tube also to fill and bounce and do a basic fill of somewhere on the background so my ring light will act as my key light and the tube light will act as my fill light but just ensure the tube light is right not behind my back or just up here that's like a disaster setting you know that's like straight the light falls onto the camera and gives you the worst possible picture because you might want to give that very halo godly like feeling with the light behind you know like how pravin was mentioning he uses the moonlight you know he sits but it is not going to give you that moonlight feel at all you know it is <laughs> because it is not going to give you that halo tube light behind your back or any light source behind your back unless planned with a really no 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 the light has to be here the light has to light your background not the light being the background you know <laughs> arish i use this to bounce the light off into the camera <laughs> you have a natural reflector <laughs> uh, karthik you've been waiting for a while for a question would you like to ask hello mr harish uh, i want to thank you for your uh, very wonderful insights that you've given all of us thank and you. uh, I I do use a few of the tips you've mentioned. I'll perhaps implement some of the others that you've uh, suggested. I wanted to ask uh, in a very specific fashion: if you oh. use are are familiar with the OBS software or OBS is the SS software, and uh, if you have any tips for me, perhaps that I could use and help my uh, video broadcast be better. Sure. Uh, are you already on OBS or are you going to start OBS? I already have. I have been using OBS, and I have, in addition to that, an external camera connected. Mm -hmm. um, so I already tried the forty-five degree lighting and everything that that was mentioned. So apart from that, perhaps in the software sense, could I improve the quality or uh, make some changes there? Because my setup seems to be all right. Right, I, I think uh, OBS with a good DSLR and light is probably a good setup to have. But yes, uh, OBS needs a bit of a handling in terms of understanding what you're doing. Ensure in your OBS setting, ensure you've put the stream out or the video out quality is set to HD into 1920 1080. and also check the frame rate at which you are giving out the oh, by default it takes a gamer's stream rate about 60 frames per second you probably don't need to have so much unless you're playing a game you can bring that down to some 30 frames per second you would go you will find these in the settings in obs ensure those are fixed and then the most important part you have the lighting if you are using the key there are those gamma filters there are a lot of filters for your visuals in obs use those filters adjust your lighting color tone and then you will see the your it, you can actually make it look like a fairly good movie like quality out from obs using those filters try and explore the filters you will find a big difference and second don't forget to use the audio filters use your compressor use your noise gate by default they will adjust your sound 
amazing quality you'll get. Uh, Harish, at this point, if I may jump in, mm-hmm. folks, if a whole lot of you are interested, uh, uh, I'm volunteering on behalf of Harish that he can conduct a separate OBS session, yes. open broadcast studio session, which will transform the way you present. But that brings me to a question for all of you. This is the creativity special interest group of type. All the other special interest groups talk about marketing or finance or retail or something specific. Here we talk about creativity, presentation, ideation, photography, lighting, and a whole lot. So if you have any specific requests on under the creativity umbrella, you've got Harish and me right here. We are co-chairs of the creativity SIG. We have in the past organized a photography talk and show, a fashion show from which entrepreneurs can learn. So if you have a whole lot of ideas, feel free to share here in the chat or write into Tai Chennai and we'll be happy to organize. Uh, and most of these are customized. So if you want book writing workshops, um, how do you shoot and take things on a mobile phone, which Harish would come in and we will bring in external folks as well. Anything under the creativity umbrella that spurs entrepreneurship for each of us. Harish, any comments here? Sure. Always game, Praveen. Like um, uh, one thing I should always thank uh, Praveen also, you know, uh, over the years, I think over the last decade or so, we've been doing lots of masti and uh, so much on the Thai stage and forums and stuff like that. It's always been a pleasure. And uh, I, I would say most importantly, it allows us to be more childlike and explore the creativity side and said, yes, any time to keep it keep the spark alive and go ahead and do it. <laughs> One last finishing up question from Viji Hari. Even on a ring light, should we use a white cloth? You would not need on a ring light because uh, generally the ring light is a pretty, whereas there is a control for diffusing it. You know, you can adjust the intensity of the ring light by default. So you don't have to do that for the white cloth on top uh, because all you have to do is adjust the intensity and see where the intensity on your face is looking good. You know, just keeping it too blaring and bright is what is the problem. And probably generally the dual tone works very good with the ring light. It's neither that the fewer, the most of these cheap ring lights don't give you the perfect temperature. So you will, the white one is extreme and the yellow one is also extreme. So I always find the middle one, you know, which takes a bit of the white and the yellow gives a fairly decent uh, diffuse light. That's very good. And I would say play around with the intensity of the button there and it will do wonders. And I also saw uh, stuff somebody had asked about the uh, spectacles, you know, what do we do when there is a, I'm wearing a set of glasses and the light is this thing. Ah, hi, Jyoti, you had asked. Uh, See the classic thing that can happen. I don't have my glasses here. Um, See the classic thing that you can do is ensure the light is not too low here. Raise the light a little up you know, increase the height of the light a little up. So automatically when that happens, so basically what happens, the light is up here, the light is coming and falling here and my shadow is going down. So the light is avoiding. So just what you have to do is sit in your position, start increasing the light to a level where the reflection does not come onto your glass. It's still filling you. And then you can tilt down the light a little bit so that it's still filling you, but the glare is not falling on your glasses. The main problem is the light is a little too low and it'll hit your glasses first and it'll be seen very obviously in the camera. Super. So if there are no further questions, Harish, awesome as usual. A whole lot of uh, positive comments are flowing in. The uh, gift for participation and encouragement goes to Shankar, Shankar Recruitment. So um, I will coordinate with the Thai office and send across uh, uh, a book which will actually be a book from another time member, Viji Hari, who's also participating called Behind Closed Cubicles, which you will find of significant relevance to your HR part of it. Uh, Thank Priya, you. it's over to you. Uh, before, before that, sorry, Priya. Uh, Harish, we've got our calendar quite uh, tied up. I've just noted down, um, we need one on video and presentation on podcasting, storytelling, scripting, Canva, uh, and uh, OBS, of course. So I think wow. Priya, we've got one per month and the calendar is filled, uh, filled up to December, Harish. Sure, sure. Anytime, just give me a little heads up in advance and I'm, I should be game for that. It's always a pleasure talking to Thai. It's like 
for me it's more like a family uh, there so it's always a pleasure coming there and also i will uh, tell you something uh, do check out uh, my uh, youtube channel uh, it's called out the box life on youtube i've sta- i'll be posting a lot of uh, regular content on tech more so from the visual perspectives in terms of say latest cameras that are coming in or latest gadgets that you can try about so do uh, subscribe to that and you'll start getting a lot more content on that as well